Learning objectives include how disease occurs and what are various factors that aid in setting up of an infection. When the microbes overpowers host body defenses, we see the disease occurs. So there are things that must be met before we see an infection to convert itself into a disease. And those are that the pathogen, the first step is that the pathogen must get access to the host. Second is, after getting access, it must attach to the body cells. And then it must be able to penetrate the defenses of the host and get into the cells. And then it should be able to cause damage to the body or to the cells in order to cause dysfunction or disease. Now, what are various portals of entry or sites of entry through which organisms gain access to the body? One is mucous membrane. All tubular organs like our oral cavity, our respiratory system, our digestive system, urogenital system, they're all tubule organs. They have tube-like structures and there is a lining inside of epithelial cells and all these uh, epithelial lining is basically called mucous membrane. Respiratory and digestive system are the largest portals of entry of organisms. As we breathe, every minute we take breath, multiple breaths in a minute. And if the organisms are there in the air, they will get to our respiratory system. Similarly, we eat food, we drink water. So the second largest is our digestive system. So these are natural uh, sites where the organisms can gain access to our body. Skin is another portal of entry. Skin normally is a barrier. It does not allow, if the skin is intact, it does not allow the organisms to enter the body. But if we receive a cut, then this can allow the organisms to invade the body. Another term that you must know is called parenteral route or root. Parenteral is any root or route other than the oral route. I mean, whatever we eat is called enteral. Enteral enteritis, these are all relating to GI tract. So this word is paraenteral. So in other words, parenteral means other than the mouth. So if you inject something, it becomes parenteral. If there is a cut in the body, it's come, it is called parenteral route. So parenteral route is another route. And every organism has a preferential route of entry, like streptococci inhaled versus ingested. If streptococci are inhaled, they can cause the disease quickly. But if they're ingested, you need more number of organisms to cause disease, and also they are less likely to cause the disease. Another thing that we must keep in mind is the number of organisms. If there are few organisms, the disease would not show up. If there are many, of course it will. So how much number is needed to cause an infection or disease? There is a term called ID50, infectious dose 50. Infectious dose 50 is basically virulence that can be expressed in terms of ID50. It depends upon the route of entry. So if there are two organisms or the same organisms given through different routes, routes, need a different number of organisms to cause infection in 50% of the population. So ID50 basically is a term we use for um, infectious organisms that are needed to cause infection in 50% of the population. That is called ID50. To give you an example of this ID50 that varies 
with respect to the root, we can see that bacillus anthracis, which, calls an, which, which causes anthrax in, in humans, if you introduce those spores through the skin, you need only 10 to 50 spores to cause the infection or disease. But if those spores are given through the respiratory system, then you need 10 to 20 thousands of spores. Okay? And if they are ingested, they're given through the oral cavity, you need 250 to 1,000 thousand spores, a lot more in order to get the disease. So you can see that ID50 varies with respect to the root. And this will also vary from organisms to organisms. There is another term, LD50. It's a lethal dose 50, mostly used for toxins. Much like ID50, there's LD50. So this is the dose of a, a toxin that is needed to cause death in 50% of the population. As an example, botulinum toxin is so potent that it can kill uh, a mice with only 0 0.03 nanogram per kg. If it, this is so small amount, you can imagine, but this small amount is enough to kill a mice or mouse. Shiga toxin is another toxin by a bacteria that lives in the gut um, of animals, but we get sometimes from those animals. 250 nanogram per kg is the dose that can kill 50% of the population. Staph and teratoxin can cause damage with 1,350 nanogram per kg dose. So in summary, uh, we saw that there are requirements for the disease to occur and virulency and lethality could be expressed in terms of 50% dose.